Assalamu alaikum. This is Jihangir and you are watching Medical and Nursing Lectures. Dear learners, today we are going to discuss some health assessment multiple choice questions. So here the question number one is, the difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure is option A, blood pressure, option B, central venous pressure, option C, pulse pressure, and the last option is pulses paradoxes. Here the correct option is pulse pressure. The difference between systolic and diastolic blood pressure is called pulse pressure, which is 30 mmHg in normal individuals. Question number two. The artery which supply blood to the heart is called option A, pulmonary artery, option B, cephalic artery, option C, coronary artery, and the last option is intercostal artery. So the artery which supply to the heart is called coronary artery. Here option C is the correct one. Here you can see in the picture that um, the coronary artery is applied to the heart by its own because uh, as you know that the heart is a pumping uh, organ and it needs fuel by itself. So uh, it, uh, it is supplied by the coronary artery to provide all its uh, oxygen requirement and nutritional requirement which is fulfilled by the coronary artery. Question number three. In cardiac cycle, the atrial systole can be completed in option A 0.1 second, option B 0.3 second, option C 0.5 second, and the last option is 0.8 second. Here the correct option is option A 0.1 second. A 55 year old woman with 5 children has varicose veins of the lower extremities. Her most characteristic sign is option A blanching death-like appearance of the extremities on elevation option b reduce art arterial circulation option c loss of hair on feet and toes option d dilated torches superficial bluish vessels here the correct option is option d you will find dilated torches superficial bluish vessels in a person who has having varicose veins Atropic skin changes that occur with peripheral arterial insufficiency include thin shiny skin with loss of hair, option B brown discoloration, option C thick leathery skin and the last option is slow healing blisters on the skin. The correct option is option A thin shiny skin with loss of hair. Another question is a known risk factor for venous ulcer development is option A obesity, option B male gender, option C history of hypertension and the last option is daily aspirin therapy. The correct option is option A obesity. The nurse auscultates the pulmonic valve area in which region second right intercostal space, option B second left intercostal space, option C left lower sternal border. The last option is fifth interspace left midclavicular line. Here the correct option is option B. The nurse will auscultate the pulmonary valve area and the second left intercostal space. It is also given in the picture that the uh, nurse can the, the, the nurse should auscultate the pulmonary valve area and the second left intercostal space. When assessing the carotid artery, the nurse should palpate option A bilaterally at the same time while standing behind the patient, option B medial to the sternomastoid muscle one side at a time, option C for a brute while asking the patient to hold his or her breath briefly, option D for unilateral distension while turning the patient's head to one side. Here the correct option is option B medial to the sternomastoid muscles one side at a time. raising the legs 12 inches off the table and then having the person sit up and dangle the leg. The color should return in 5 seconds or less, option B, 10 seconds or less, option C, 15 seconds, and the last option is 30 seconds. Here the correct option is option B, 10 seconds or less. Arteriosclerosis is caused by Deposition of fatty plaques on the intima of the arteries. Option B, loss of elasticity of the walls of blood vessels. Option C, loss of lymphatic tissues that occur in the aging process. Option D, progressive enlargement of the intramuscular calf veins. 
option e taking high sodium diet here the correct option is option a deposition of fatty plaques on the intima of the arteries the nurse auscultates the aortic valve area in which region second right intercostal space second left intercostal space left lower sternal border or the fifth interspace left midclavicular line here the correct option is option a the nurse can auscultate the aortic valve area in the second right intercostal space Reinhardt phenomena occurs option a when the patient's extremities are exposed to heat and compression option b and hands and feet is a result of exposure to cold vibration and stress option c after removal of lymph nodes or damage to lymph nodes and channels and the last option is is a result of leg cramps due to excessive walking on climbing stairs the correct option is option b and hands and feet is a result of exposure to cold vibration and stress intermittent claudication includes muscular pain relieved by exercise option b neurologic pain relieved by exercise option c muscular pain brought on by exercise the last option is option d neurologic pain brought on by exercise here we should know first about the claudication that what is exactly claudication is so it is been defined as claudication refers to muscle pain due to lack of oxygen that's triggered by activity and relieved by rest so here the correct option is option c that muscular pain brought on by exercise dilated tortuous vein with incompetent valves are called option a varicose veins option b atherosclerosis option c thrombophlebitis option d phlebitis the correct option is option a varicose veins the nurse is assessing the heart of the adult patient he know that the exact position of the heart is the heart spans the area from the second intercostal space to the fifth intercostal space at the left midclavicular line option b the heart spans the area from the second intercostal space to the fifth intercostal space at the right midclavicular line the third option is anterior axillary line at the right the last option is interior axillary line at the left here the correct option is option a the heart spans the area from the second intercostal space to the fifth intercostal space at the left midclavicular line another question is apply pressure behind slightly below the malleolus of the ankle you will be able to feel option a the posterior tibial pulse popliteal pulse dorsalis pedis pulse brachial pulse so in this area you can locate the posterior tibial pulse the correct option is option a pulse which has a sharp up stroke and down stroke with a pointed peak the amplitude is elevated this type of pulse is called bounding pulse option b weak pulse option c pulses alternance the last option is pulses bigimenous here the correct option is option a this type of pulse is called bounding pulse pulse which is a regular alternating patterns of weak and strong pulse this pulse is associated with left sided heart failure option a bounding pulse option b weak pulse option c pulses alternance the last option is pulses bigimenous the correct option is option c which is pulses alternance another question is while assessing muscle strength patient competes range of motion against the gravity only the nurse will score him 5 by 5 option b 4 by 5 option c 3 by 5 option d 2 by 5 the correct option is option c 3 by 5 pronation and supination of the hands and forearm are the result of the articulation of the scapula and clavicle option b radius and ulna option c patella and condyle of fibula the last option is femur and acetabulum with the help of the picture you can easily guess that 
which two bones can help the hen and the forearm to articulate so here the correct option is option b radius and ulna examination of the shoulder includes four motions these are option a forward flexion internal rotation abduction and external rotation option b abduction adduction pronation and supination option c circumduction inversion eversion and rotation the last option is elevation retraction protraction and circumduction the correct option is option a fibrous pains running directly from one bone to another that strengthen the joint and help prevent movement in undesirable directions are known as brusa tendons cartilage ligaments the correct option is option d turning the hand upward is supination pronation inversion eversion the correct option is option a supination the medical record indicates that a person has an injury to broca's area when meeting this person you expect option a difficulty speaking option b receptive aphasia option c visual disturbances the last option is emotional liability as you know that broca's area is responsible for the motor controlling of speech so this kind of patient will feel difficulty in speaking option a is the correct one the control of body temperature is located in vernix area thalamus cerebellum or the hypothalamus the correct option is option d hypothalamus the test for stereognosis you would option a have the person close his or her eyes and then raise the person's arm and ask the person to describe its location touch the person with a tuning fork place a coin in the person's hands and ask him or her to identify it touch the person with a cold object the correct option is option c place a coin in the person's hand and ask him or her to identify it a 65 year old man has noticed a change in his personality and his ability to understand he also cries and becomes angry very easily the cerebral lobe responsible for these behaviors is the lobe option a frontal lobe option b parietal lobe option c occipital lobe the last option is temporal lobe the correct option is option a the frontal lobe having the following um, responsibilities the first one is problem solving the second one is movement and the third one is social interaction cerebellar function is assessed by which of the following muscle size and strength assessment cranial nerve examination coordination hopping on one foot spinothalamic test correct option is option c coordination hopping on one foot examiner estimated the jugular venous pressure identified the finding that is abnormal option a patient elevated to 30 degrees internal jugular vein pulsation at 1 cm above sternal angle option b patient elevated to 30 degrees internal jugular vein pulsation at 2 cm above sternal angle option c patient elevated to 40 degrees internal jugular vein pulsation at 1 cm above sternal angle option d patients elevated to 45 degrees internal jugular vein pulsation at 44 cm above sternal angle pulsation at 4 cm above sternal angle the correct option is option d the patient is asked to remove his shoes and stand with his two feet together the arms are held next to the body or crossed in front of the body the clinician asks the patient to first stand quickly with eyes open and subsequently with eyes closed the patient tries to maintain his balance this type of test is termed as romberg test option b allen test option c phalanx maneuver option d go to sign the correct option is 
option A Romberg test you can see also in the picture that how to perform Romberg test another question is while assessing the carotid artery the nurse should palpate bilaterally at the same time while standing behind the patient option B medial to the sternomastoid muscle one side at a time option C for a brute while asking the patient to hold his or her breath briefly option D for unilateral distension while turning the patient's head to one side the correct option is option B medial to the sternomastoid muscles one side at a time When auscultating the hearts, your first step is to option A, identify S1 and S2 sounds. Option B, listen for S3 and S4 sounds. Option C, listen for murmur sounds. The last option is identify all four sounds on the first round. The correct option is option A. Although a full mental status examination may not be required, you must be aware of the four main headings of the assessment while performing the interview and physical examination. These headings are mood, affect, consciousness and orientation, memory, attention, thought, content and perception, language, orientation, attention and abstract reasoning. The last option is appearance, behavior, cognition, and thought process, which is the correct option. Option D is the correct one. You are performing a mental status examination, which assessment would be most appropriate? Examining the patient's EEG, electroencephalography. Option B, observing the patient as he or she takes an IQ test. Option C, observing the patient and inferring health or dysfunction. Option D, examining the patient's response to a specific set of questions. Correct option is option D, examining the patient's response to a specific set of questions. Another question is, have the patient put the bags of his hands together and flex his wrist downward at a 90 degrees angle? Pain or numbness in his hand or fingers during this maneuver indicates Option A, positive allen test. Option B, negative allen test. Option C, positive phelan signs. Option D, negative phelan sign. You can see in the picture, we should ask the patient that to downward has flex at 90 degree angle. So if the patient have the pain uh, and numbness uh, within one minute, so here we will say that the patient have positive phelan sign. Here the correct option is option C. Nurse is trying to provide range of motion exercise to his patient, but the patient cannot move his hand away from the body. This is known as abnormality and abduction, adduction, inversion, eversion. The correct option is option A, abduction. When patient move his head at the 45 degrees to the back side, this is called flexion, hyperextension, extension, Option D is internal rotation. So this kind of movement of the head is called hyperextension. The correct option is option B. The nurse asks the patient to move his head at the 45 degrees to forward. This type of movement is called option A flexion, option B hyperextension, option C extension. The last option is internal rotation. The correct option is option A flexion. Nurse Ahmed is going to assist the patient in different position to determine that he can maintain his body balance or not. Which cranial nerve is responsible for maintaining balance? Option A, vestibulocochlear. Option B, glossopharyngeal. Option C, vagus nerve. Option D, spinal accessory nerve. The correct option is option A, vestibulocochlear nerve. The length of the spine from neck to waist usually increases by at least a centimeter when the patient bends forward. Option A 5 centimeter, option B 7 centimeter, option C 9 centimeter. The last option is 11 centimeter. The correct option is option A 5 centimeter. The nurse is going to assess the gross hearing of the patient. Which nerve is responsible for hearing? Option A vestibular cochlear, option B glossopharyngeal, option C vagus nerve, the last option is spinal accessory nerve. 
The correct option is option A, vestibular cochlear nerve. Thank you for watching. Please share and like the video.